YouTubers, Mike Martin's here, Mike Martin's channel. Man, I got a great article for you guys that just came up. I just found this by chance. The battle to clean up BC. What are they talking about? Pollution? Garbage? Uh, waste removal? No. Terry Glavin in the efforts to undo a decade of indifference that turned Vancouver into an epicenter of fraud, scams, and real estate mania. By Terry Glavin, February 7th, 2018. So... This is no surprise. If you follow me on my channel, this is no surprise that this has been happening. People with suitcases of money coming into the country and screwing over the middle class Canadian who is being totally bought out. And then people telling me in the comment section that I'm living in a delusional world that the average house needs to be at least a million dollars nowadays, which is probably 14 to 18 times the average person's income that could pay it back after property tax and utilities and uh, house insurance and just the standard cost of living with gasoline, car insurances. Well, I don't know. You tell me how much a house should be worth. So let's go down here and look at this here. It is such a lovely picture that the city of Vancouver managed to, to paint itself over the last 10 years. And that Gregor Happy Planet Robertson was mayor. That it's no, That it's no wonder so many people believed it. A thriving and happily multicultural Pacific metropolis of bike lanes and balmy weather, diversity and eco density and backyard chickens, high tech startups and ski slopes on the mountains just across from Burrard Inlet. Now with Robertson on his way out and the vision of Vancouver Party, a, a, a ruined brand, whoever comes out on top of October of the civic elections will be left to deal with what's become of the place. Vancouver is now at the top. Let me see if I can read it from back here. At the top in October of the civic elections will be left to deal with what's becoming of the place. Vancouver is now, sorry, I read that, a kind of freeze trade zone for gangland money launderers, absentee offshore real estate speculators, absentee, eh? Uh, Chinese, uh, what does that say? Princelings? Yeah. Yeah, Princelings. On the lamb, on the globe, trotting tax frauds, Metro Vancouver is an international housing affordability basket case at the epic center of Canada's fentanyl overdose crisis. Over the past decade, homelessness and has doubled at least 4,000 people are sleeping rough in the streets. And there are now 70 homeless camps across the region. This wasn't all Roberts's fault, of course. Not by a long shot. BC's Provincial Liberal Party played a part in it. Defeated last May in a hair's breath, breath election that resulted in the new Democratic Party forming an alliance with BC's Greens. Christy Clark's six-year tender of the Liberal Party premier ended under a cloud of RCMP investigations into payments from lobbyist and ethic vote harvesting scandal. A trove of incriminating paper trails only now coming through light shows Christy Liberal liberals knew very well what was happening. So remember, like I said in the last video, Follow the money. You want answers? Just follow the money. You'll find everything you look. It's a paper trail, right? It's a breadcrumb trail. For now, the job of sorting out everything has fallen mostly on David Ebis. Ebis, I can't pronounce that. BC's 41-year-old justice minister and attorney general. Two months ago, in the speech at the conference co-hosted by Transparency International Canada, the International Center for Criminal Law Reform, E.B., described Vancouver and British Columbia in the most accurately unflattering terms. I bet. Watch what he says. We, we, we knew there was something strange going on, but, my God, we had no idea it was this big, E.B. said. British Columbia had, be had become reduced to a, a jurisdiction where, where the rules did not apply to white-collar crime, fraud, tax evasion, money laundering, where even the rules do not apply to enforcement is absent. Because the enforcement's out uh, auditing, the enforcement's out auditing small business to make sure they didn't miss a GST payment or something. 
Over the past 10 years, the BC Securities Commission had collected less than 2% of more than a half a billion dollars fines levied against the rogues gallery of fraudsters, swindling, and rip-off artists. Among the beneficiaries of previous Liberal government's opaque international business activity, head office tax shelter scheme with advantage BC, PACnet, a collection of agency, the U.S. Treasury Department had listed as a transnational criminal organization with a sordid track of record in money laundering and mail fraud and China Poly Group. Holy smokes. A shady Chinese real estate co-owned enterprise with payroll laundering uh, uh, of 76,000 intimate ties of people. People's Libertarian Army. A portfolio that ranges from real estate development to arms, explosives, and art exhibits. The tax shelter argument is now shuttered. Among the seizure aspects of the BC liberal legacy was peculiar uh, tall totalitarian for dirty money being laundered through BC's licensed casinos. Provincial officials were aware of the nastiness. Wow, I've never heard that in an article. Nastiness. Wow. As far back as 2009, in January of the year, the integrated illegal gaming enforcement team, HGET, conducted a threat assessment focusing on organized crime in licensed casinos and asked the Crown owned BC Lottery Corporation expanded powers to tackle the problem. Six months later, the I, uh, A, double, is it double I? Or 11 GET was disbanded because of funding pressure. Give me a break. Last September, EB appointed former RCMP Deputy Commissioner Peter Graham an authority on money laundering to come up with a series of recommendations on how to cut the flood of dirty money into BC's casinos, Metro Vancouver, overheated real estate market, and other areas in BC's economy. Uh, German's report is due next month. In the meantime, EB, I think it's EBI, or sorry, guy, if I'm butchering your name, has instituted a simple rule change and arrived at preventing drug money from being uh, loaned out by underground banks to visiting high stakes gamblers. The change was recommended to the Liberal government in 2016 in a report by MPLLP, a national, according to the tax consulting firm, Liberal government kept uh, the report a secret. Among the findings over the course of a single month in 2015, Richmond's River Rock Casino accepted $13.5 in $20 bills for mostly high roller Asian VIP clients in transactions that sometimes exceeded 500 large. The MNP LP LLP rule change that is liberal ignored, but the e buy has put in place. You will no longer be able to drive your Lamborghini from $10 million Point Grey Mansion across the Oak Street Bridge to Richmond, stroll into a government licensed River Rock Casino, and buy your chips at half a million dollars in $20 bills in a duffel bag, then cash them the same day. It's a start. This should have been. In place since the time of Jesus. I don't know why this is happening right now. So this is all stories and stuff that I've been covering here. This goes on forever, guys. This is all. This is a novel, okay, guys. But why are they? I guess they're getting the pressure because what's happening? I think what's happening. Okay, no one could afford to buy a house. That's fine. I don't think that's what the problem is. I think what's happening is the infrastructure is lacking. Garbage men, police officers. I talked to a police officer that moved up here. Uh, that's going to live up here now, and he's going to work for for the RCMP up here. There's another uh, another uh, firefighter that moved from the coast that can't afford to live there. Uh, lots of nurses leaving the coast. Lots of nurses leaving to Florida. All all kinds of places. I think the infrastructure is lacking because no one could afford to maintain a, a decent lifestyle in the city of Vancouver. A lot of us left. Lots of us. My entire street. Seven out of ten people are from Vancouver. It's like I'm living in Vancouver here, but you know, without. The congestion and the uh, the traffic and 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 rude people and an absolute disgusting attitude from some people. It's just I'm, I'm very happy to be away or, or or distant from all that. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think. It's about time that they actually acknowledge that they're going to start cleaning up this problem. It's been a problem for many many people, but I think 
uh, BC's infrastructure is going to suffer big time. And I'm not talking about streets. I'm talking about finding qualified people to work positions. Because when I went to my stepson's parent-teacher interview, uh, my stepson, Rain, we went to his uh, parent-teacher interview, and a majority of the teachers had a really hard time grasping the English language. And I don't know why that's even allowed to – like, I mean, I'm not even going to go there, so we're not going there. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this. It's happening in every major city until somebody steps up or another government gets elected into power. The problem won't be fixed until somebody steps up with a political platform to fix the housing problem because the housing problem has been a big problem in pretty much every speak English-speaking country in the world. Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.